What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back in more troll, 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 and today we are going to be talking about gear crafting. So gear crafting has quite a few things that we need to actually talk about, uh, but let's start at the beginning. So first of all, when is the update coming out for console? We don't know. Stop asking. I, I'm, I'm not meaning to be mean, but really I have no connection or affiliation with the developers. And even if I did, they never tell me anything anyways. So nobody knows when the update comes out for console, hopefully soon TM. I know, especially you guys on Xbox are a couple updates behind, but yeah, essentially what's going to happen when this update goes live for you guys, or if you're already on PC and you're just wondering about the gear crafting is you will notice that a new task will end up showing up in the top right to end up interacting with all these different tables. So let me give a quick summary of what each of these do before we get into the gear crafting. So this guy is going to essentially be your daily shop. You can end up buying a bunch of block element from him five per day, which I would recommend that you do just while you're progressing through the gear crafting. It's going to be very, very essential to do that. Uh, he is going to have gear crafter vault keys, which is very expensive for your cubits. But if you don't have anything else that you're spending your cubits on, these are very valuable. And yes, I know that this one in particular where you buy the 10 keys is glitched and bugged, but I can't talk about that, sorry to say. Uh, and then there's also going to end up being the molds, and these are going to end up being your bread and butter for progressing through the profession, but also the secret trick to leveling up Crystal 5. More on that later. Then there's going to end up being the gear crafter terminus. Now this, I'm getting a little ahead of myself because the only way that you can interact with this thing is by having your gear crafting maxed out. But... I can kind of just summarize and say that the only thing that you might want to get out of this is these three tabs right here because it's going to give you a bunch of vaults and a bunch of keys for a lot of block element. Uh, but on top of that, you can get six different buffs as far as I've heard out of here, and they are astronomically bad. So you probably don't want to bother actually doing any of them. Yeah, you can also reset this skill tree, but th this thing sucks. So don't even bother with it unless you just have a lot of excess resource so that you can end up getting your hands on the uh, vaults and so on and so forth. I don't even know why I already upgraded this once, but now I have to upgrade it again. Very strange but I guess it was just unlocking the category and now I'm actually upgrading it. It's stupid and expensive. So let's get to the gear crafting. So for the gear crafting, uh, you'll notice that each of the different items is going to end up increasing in cost and is essentially going to cost new resources, which is the gear crafters mold, which can be gotten from loot collecting gear at three stars or more. You can actually upgrade random gear that you find in the environment up to three stars and then loot collect it. It is going to end up being quite expensive for you to spend all of those resources to do that, but it will be more cost effective for your flux if you're really struggling, because if you don't end up loot collecting gear at three stars or higher, you're going to have to buy a bunch of molds from this guy. And late game, you're going to have to buy a lot of molds from this guy regardless. So on top of that, there's also going to end up being the block element. This is another new resource that you get from loot collecting gear as a whole. Now, the interesting thing is I would recommend if you're free to play or if you're just very slow in progression, and I don't mean any shame in that, I'm just saying like if you just really want to take it casually, I wouldn't worry about rushing through this profession because the only reason that it might take you a while to get through this profession is because these new resources you aren't going to have. But keeping in mind that these are essentially just gotten from loot collecting gear, it means that in a couple months or even a couple years, we're going to have hundreds of thousands of this. And more than likely, we're going to just keep getting more of these resources because late game, once we end up getting like maxed out crystal five gear on most of our classes or whatever, there's not really any continual reason that you would bother crafting gear. More on that later, but let's just get into it. So you would end up going through the crafting table over and over again. The resources get steadily more expensive, more particularly with the block element and forged souls and so on and so forth until eventually you can end up crafting crystal gear, which requires a pure forge mold, which I think you get this from crystal gear exclusively, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then I've already got the upgrade where I can craft crystal too. So you can see it's a little bit more expensive, more particularly that block element is brutal. The amount of forge fragments, the amount of nitro. Why would I bother spending these resources to craft the gear when I can very easily just get the crystal gear out in the world? Right. So talking about that, there's going to end up being the gear crafters vaults, but you can also get crystal gear dropped in the world. Now, 
Lots of you were asking me in my more recent videos, what power rank do you have to be in order to get Crystal Gear to drop from enemies in dungeons? No power rank. I thought that went without question. The power rank requirement is only affecting these boxes, which I'm getting ahead of myself. The gear that you end up gaining in the overworld, you have to be in U11 in order to get Crystal 5, which means that you have to be at a minimum of 30 KPR. Magic Find doesn't really matter for Crystal Gear. Uh, you can get it as low as like 2000 Magic Find as far as I know. But the way that Magic Find works in Trove is essentially when a piece of gear drops, it has a random chance of actually triggering Magic Find. And when Magic Find triggers, it essentially is going to take that piece of gear and up it by one rarity. Meaning that the reason why the higher tiered Crystal Gear is so difficult to actually get as a random drop is because the stars have to align for you to get, for example, a Crystal 4 drop and then Magic Find just randomly has to trigger and bump it up to C5. Okay, now on top of that, the gear that you can get dropped in the world can be all over the place in terms of its stars. So the, the you know, the, the forge level of it. Uh, but Crystal 5, as far as I know in particular, and, and Crystal 4 and so on and so forth, they'll drop at zero stars, which means that you would essentially have to level it up from zero which is why I put no personal value on dropped gear and why I tell you guys in my videos, only use dropped crystal gear if you need that power rank boost, but don't bother leveling it up or investing in it because in comparison, the crystal gear that you can craft or more particularly the crystal gear that you can get out of these boxes can actually start at two stars or even three stars. And that saves you a lot of resources, more particularly with the nitro and forge fragments and so on and so forth. Now, one thing I gotta mention very briefly, just because lots of you keep asking, why can't you end up uh, using the crystalline forge to craft up crystal gear anymore? Well, because it's pointless, because crystal gear has just been migrated over into the gear crafting. So why would this thing allow you to craft crystal gear? However, something important to note that a lot of you keep asking about is if you kill Leviathans, now they actually have a chance of dropping these overpacked nitro decay vaults, whatever. Uh, these are boxes that essentially you want to grind as much as you can. Uh, it doesn't matter what uber difficulty you're in. It's just you're going to get more of these boxes for being uh, fighting higher uber difficulty leviathans. Um, in short, you'll spend a certain amount of flux to open these boxes and get 175 nitro, but it's going to increase in flux cost every one that you end up crafting until daily reset hits and then it goes back to a thousand. So I've heard from you guys the most beneficial amount of these boxes to open per day is 10. Anything further than that, and then you are spending well above the market value of what Nitro is. But obviously you have to kind of look at the Nitro, uh, that, uh, you know, the Nitro price on the market and consider that and calculate that for yourself. With all of that said, thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you found today's video helpful. Smash like, sub for more, buy the merch you want, support the channel, and have a wonderful day.